you ever thought, well, why my mobile device actually looks like that, right? You know, it is flat, it is cold, it is smooth. It is something I never liked about mobile devices. There is something very important with mobile devices. They are great for communication, they are great for productivity, and most importantly now, I use my mobile device to communicate with my friends, with my loved one. But they are not that good when it comes to mediated communication. Why? Because it's just a screen, a few buttons, and, and, and a microphone, and that's pretty much it. And to me, this is an issue. This is an issue because when we are interacting in face-to-face -face with someone else, well, we are using different channels to express emotions. We are using gestures, we are using touch, we are using facial expression. And, and all of that, it's not present in the mobile devices. And so because I am a designer working on human-computer interaction, I wanted to radically rethink the form of the device that we know. I wanted to make the best device for mediated communication. And so my starting point was to question, well, what if technology was more human? Actually, literally more human. What if technology had more flesh and body? Because indeed, the human body and the human senses are incomparable to what technology can provide today. And I'm not talking in terms of efficiency or performance, but in terms of expressivity or communication capabilities. And so uh, I was questioning what if technology was more human, so more flesh and body. And so I was saying that there is one action, one thing that is typically human and that is crucial for communication, and that I particularly love to communicate. And it's, it is touch and affective touch. And touch is something we are all familiar with, right? It's something natural and spontaneous, and we touch our loved one, our parents, our friends. And we touch others to convey emotions. For instance, if I want to reassure someone or comfort someone, well, I use my hand, my fingers, and I gently stroke the skin of someone else. And most of the time, it's working. It's com very comforting, not always. But, uh, but so my question was that how to add this particular sense to our device. Or in other words, can we use the same language we use during human-to-human -human communication for human-to-device communication? And uh, I am very naive, and as a naive and straightforward thought, I thought, well, I touch using my hands and my fingers, right? So why not adding a finger to a mobile device? And it's a silly idea, but I did it anyway. And this is what <laughs> it looks like. And I, what you can see here is a fully functional mobile device that is traditionally static, passive, and motionless. And now it has a new form and, and a new function. So I gave them, with this robotic finger, a, a, a form to express motion. I gave them a tool to act upon the world. And you might ask yourself, well, how can it improve communication? Well, it can provide you know, kinesthetic feedback. It can touch the user on the wrist or the back of the hand. <laughs> And you can, now you can send a remote stroke to comfort a friend. And, and, and you can see, then you can feel, oh yes, you like that, right? And, and you can see, you can feel that it's weird. But, but we can go even further and explore other use cases. So now, you know, the phone can come to you, and it can crawl on the table. You can crawl on the table. Now, that the device itself becomes almost human. It's very unsetting. So, this project has been shared a lot on the internet and social media, and people's reactions were pretty strong. Let's have a look at some of them. Oh, it's disturbing. <laughs> that is weird. It's creepy. It's creepy. And then, and suddenly, it looks like the whole internet was completely creeped out by this device. And, that, and to be honest, that's something unexpected. I was not expecting that. And something else I was not expecting is that it generated a lot of online discussion and controversies. And it made people react on the technology itself. And that's where I realized that this project is maybe more than just a naive design, but a critical design piece that explores a speculative future that people might not want. So what is the lesson I learned building this first device? Well, when it comes to speculating on design and, and, and the form and the shape of devices, we should avoid the, the uncanny. Because from a social acceptability perspective, it's not something desirable, it's not working. But really, you know, you know what I did? I did what every researcher do again and again. I went a bit further. And what is the only thing missing on the finger I showed you? 
Well, it's just skin and flesh. So I added <laughs> skin and flesh. Yeah. And this is even more creepy and unsettling. Yes. And from this point, I decided to keep exploring this idea of anthropomorphic uh, devices. And so something interesting about smartphones is that they are made to be touched. And it turns out we know the best and most natural interface to sense touch. Well, it's the human skin. And so next project, what I did, well, I developed artificial, artificial skin for devices. And it looks like that. And I have some of them here that you can see. And so skin on interfaces are realistic, realistic skins that goes on top of a device. So it's a case, basically, right? And they look like skin. They feel also like skin. And most importantly, well, this surface is capable to detect human-to-human -to -human touch vocabulary, like here, pinching. You could never pinch a phone like that. And now, <laughs> hey, you can. And so as you, as you can see, the prototype is even more uncanny. And, and the users, like here, I'm, like, it's like touching a chunk of dead skin with wrinkle and skin part. That's really weird. Uh, and it feels weird. And I guess you are weird. And you are not the only one. Because again, what do you think happens once I publish that? Well, down the road again. Like, it's creepy. <laughs> and people had a super strong reaction, more creepy. And nobody asked for that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but it's OK. It's OK. <laughs> It is really OK, because it was actually the goal of this project, to explore a possible future and question the shape of the devices and how we interact with them. And so um, among all those comments, it also opened up some discussion. Does our devices need a cover that feels like human skin? And people started to question their own relationship with technologies and what does it me actually mean for human communication? And so uh, I showed you two devices that, are, that revolve around touch. But there is not only touch to express emotion during face-to-face -face conversation. And actually, facial expressions are very important. And a gaze, a contact are very crucial. As the human eye is like the best interface, the best organ to communicate emotions. And that's something interesting, because in our surrounding, well, we all have tiny eyes now everywhere. It's seeing devices. It's the cameras of our mobile devices, or even like they look like that, the webcam that we use for the past couple of years, <laughs> a lot of us. And because the webcams are essential for video conferences, and we are very familiar with this typical shape. But how to redesign the webcam and why? Well, the human eyes and the webcam share the same purpose, right? <laughs> you, you know where I'm going. And they are, <laughs> they are seeing, they are seeing their surroundings. But the the interesting thing with human eyes is that they are expressive. They can express happiness, hunger, or boredom, or they can look curious, distracted, or focused. And so to redesign the webcam, well, I decided just to merge the two, right? So I created this new device. <laughs> that is right here. And so this device is called Acam, and it's a webcam shaped like a human eye. And so it can move, blink, and it can replicate the human eye's movements. But it can also, like a uh, human eye, look around, observe people, and actually see. And so, how can we use this device? Well, well, ACAMS can show awareness. It can open or close its eyelid, and it can, like here, wake up on its own. Uh, it is also very expressive. It can express a variety of facial uh, emotions. And so something interesting happened during the, the design process. So we created several skins uh, with various pigmentation and textures. And actually, it made us realize how ACAM can be a replica of ourselves. And we can imagine maybe just gifting your eye to someone, to a friend, to a loved one. And then it can reflect your emotions when you are video chatting to maybe improve communication. Maybe not. And we can even go even further and maybe it can highlight the bonding we have with some of our devices. And we can use that as a pet or companion. So I know you are all creeped out. And, and, and again, it's, all right, it's OK. <laughs> you are not the only one. But just imagine if all the cameras around us would be shaped like an eye. I think we will be 
all of us much more cautious of the amount of cameras around us and maybe more aware, more scared of the camera that are invading our privacy. Okay, so taking a step back, you might wonder, like, what is just that just so today? Uh, this is completely useless, and nobody uh, asks for that, nobody wants that, and nobody will never use that. Uh, but first, what is this? Uh, well, this is an approach called provocative design. So provocative design can be used to unveil some issues we have today with technology. So if you are using our building technology, well, I encourage you to think and reflect using provocative design. So those steps are fairly simple. First, question what is around you. Question the status quo that we have with technologies today. Then don't hesitate to push to the extreme because that's what I did with this project. And finally, it, pushing to the extreme can help you to, to reflect and discuss. And for instance here, to reflect and discuss on what type of interaction you want with other people and devices. So this is useless. Well, yes, maybe it can be seen as a bit useless, and, and, and at least I deliberately build things that nobody wants and nobody will use. And you know what? I even don't want my devices <laughs> to be like that in 10 years. No, not at all. I don't want to have that, that flesh in my pocket, but no. Um, yet, I think this approach is useful and even critical, because why did you felt weird seeing these devices? Because I think you never thought that technology could look like that. And I think the main issue is that right now, nobody is really thinking the shape or the form of the devices. And you, me, as customers, we just buy the tech available. That in, and that's why phone exist in a cold, flat, and aluminum minimalist way. And I think we should expect more from the design of devices, because the design defines the way we interact. And if you want to interact in a more human and natural way, maybe it's time to radically rethink the, how the devices look like. And this is why I built those three devices, to challenge you in your beliefs and make you think of what type of technology we really need and we really want for society tomorrow. Thank you.